all the way back in the early 2000s, there started to be these legends going around in the industry about the fact that apparently Electronic Arts was trying to make their own horror masterpiece. This was still during the time where Resident Evil and Silent Hill completely dominated the horror genre. Now, as a fan of scares, I was very curious about this. There started to be these weird articles in gaming magazines talking about the fact that Glenn Schofield and his buddies were actually locking themselves in cabins to study the nature of scares by watching horror movies and beating horror games on the hardest difficulty, and the product of that turned out to be 2008's Dead Space. Now, this game is a freaking masterpiece. I've beaten it so many times. I love the entire trilogy. I even tracked down and read the weird freaking Dead Space books and watched the rather terrible Dead Space movies. But is this remake actually good? Is it able to recapture the magic of this terrifying original? In my opinion, yes. The Dead Space remake is a freaking masterpiece. It is perfect. It improves every single aspect of the original game, from the monster design to the graphics to rebalancing the guns themselves and even adding in tons of additional story that drastically improve the game itself. But let's talk about that. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So real quick, in case you've never played Dead Space, the setup is incredibly simple. We are playing as an engineer named Isaac Clark. He is a person on a small little ship that's cruising around that tries to help people who are broken down. If your ship is stuck, if your major aircraft is having some sort of issues, he and his buddies will swoop in and help you out. Well, there is a ship called the Ishimura. This thing is freaking gigantic. It's basically a planet cracker. Their job is to be a mining rig in deep space that harvests a lot of rare minerals from lifeless planets. Well, the Ishimura has randomly stopped replying to all calls. Initially, it's assumed because it's probably just a bad communication relay. So Isaac Clark and the crew decide to go there and just check it out. But upon landing, it's dead silent. There's no welcoming committee. There's no calls. There's no anybody. And you quickly find out why. It turns out that some sort of mysterious creatures have managed to completely take over the vessel and kill 99% of the crew. They have these terrible bladed hands. I mean, these creatures seem like they're completely designed to kill and absolutely nothing else. And of course, we are not a soldier. Isaac Clark is not trained for combat. He's a freaking engineer, which means that he doesn't have a ton of different explosives and chainsaws and freaking guns. He just has his plasma cutter, which thankfully solves quite a bit of problems. In this game, instead of just trying to shoot somebody's head off because they're a zombie, instead it's about dismemberment. It's about chopping off enough arms and legs that these un dead creatures stop trying to track you down. Now, as soon as you start playing this game, the most crazy impact that initially hits you is how tremendous the new graphics engine is, the new lighting, the new smoke. A lot of the scares that sort of were kind of goofy or hokey in the original are much more effective, like getting locked in a room and there's a couple necromorphs, which are the name of these creatures, trying to track you down. The fear is way, way more effective. Now, I say that as a person who has beaten the original game so many times. In fact, I rebeat the original Dead Space in preparation for this video, and even expecting some of these scares, this game completely remixes every aspect of it. While trying to actually fight these monsters, the new graphics, you can see the layers of hanging clothes on a lot of these monsters. Gosh. As you shoot them, you realistically blow off their articles of clothing, their voices and stuff still echo in their freaking throats. The new audio design, a lot of times hearing these people moan and wheeze and almost seemingly beg to die 
is so freaking screwed up. And as you shoot them, you can now realistically see the layers of muscle and bone being broken away. But that's not my favorite part. I think I'm kind of just impressed by the fact that they fixed some fundamental problems that existed in the first Dead Space, which is that, honestly, some of the guns were completely useless. Now, I say that with a bunch of love, but the game definitely felt like they kind of made it on a timeline. Some of the guns were great. Some of the tools you pick up were completely useless. They have rebalanced everything. Each and every gadget you pick up now, and I did find every single gun in the game and use the heck out of them, they've all been completely redesigned with new alternate fires, completely rebalancing the damage, the ammo, the reload time. Everything now is extremely freaking useful, and I love that. The game definitely just wants you to try out all the different fun tools they've designed because it just feels nice to use the line cutter to use it as basically a laser shotgun or a device that blasts out condensed air to liquefy the muscle of these creatures that are chasing you down or even just straight up a classic flamethrower that can create walls of fire as its alternate shooting mechanism. I mean, this is just so fun. But more than that, I like the fact that going to the bench to upgrade your weapons, the talent trees have been completely redesigned. So a lot of these weapons feel better even when just trying to figure out how to tinker and plan out your next upgrade. But this brings me to another mega change for the better. So there is now a system called security cards. While you're playing through the main story, occasionally they'll upgrade your security clearance. Basically, at the start, you're kind of just going into the main hallways, you know, the main just chunks of the game itself, trying to find survivors, trying to just set up an SOS, you know, the standard stuff you would expect. But during the course of this, you'll notice random locked doors, side sections, sometimes lockers and stuff that you do not have access to. Well, What's kind of great is that later on, they upgrade your keycard access, and this really does kind of just invite you to backtrack. But here's the other part of it. They have created all these side routes, shortcuts to previous zones. Now, here's why I think that's just such a smart idea, which is that at the beginning of the game, they really try and convey the fact that 1,000 people lived and worked on the Ishimura, but you never really got that sense in the original game. It did at times feel very empty, very hollowed out. Whereas now, because of this extra bit of pathways, of locked doors, of backtracking, everything feels so much more connected. The entirety of the ship really feels like a bunch of people treated this as home for years. And that brings me to the tons of additional story elements all over the place. There is new audio logs, there's new text bits, there's lots of conversational pieces, and tons of new side quests in addition to a great new side quest log that lets you actually go around and find all these additional bits of lore that affect the story itself. Like, if you go off and help a mad scientist and figure out what his plans are, then this will actually affect future dialogue. This will actually change the nature of how people talk or what they're referencing. The depths of this game cannot be overstated. But even more than that, I, I like the fact that now, honestly, the new acting is perfect. So in the original game, Isaac Clark, the main character, was silent. He did not talk. And this created a lot of very awkward interactions where people would talk at you. They'd say, Isaac, go find this key. Isaac, go restart the spore drive. You know, stuff like that. Whereas now, everything is a dialogue. It's Isaac Clark talking to crewmates. Isaac Clark 
talking to other survivors. And this creates a more impactful, more necessary importance to a lot of these story beats. It's not just him standing there with a plain face waiting for people to dump the story into his slutty little eye sockets. Instead, it feels more like an actual narrative. Of course, all the character models have been redone, and a lot of times there is these extra interesting moments where it feels like they have decided to take some of the original voice lines and take them in a different direction. There was a lot of very strange moments in the original game where it felt like the actors did not quite know what they were saying. Some of the original lines would feel sarcastic or dismissive when I think they were trying to convey fear or feeling lost. And now you really get a sense that these people are panicking. The characters are deeply screwed and they absolutely know that. The flow of this entire story is just a million times better and seriously, I cannot stop loving it for that. Now, the last two aspects of this game that I want to talk about are parts of the game that did not exist in the original whatsoever, which is these power stations and also, of course, the newly introduced Zero-G Combat. Now, let's start things off by talking about that. In the original game, there wasn't really the ability to create Zero-G, like the gravity-free environments. We're in a spaceship, but parts of it have had the life support completely shut down. Some of it's exposed to, honestly, the vacuum of space. And in the original game, they just said, oh, Isaac's wearing gravity boots. So pretty much what you would do is just walk along the walls or sometimes jump from one wall to another wall. That was it. It was very, very, very basic. Whereas now you can float. You have these little jump jets on your suit so you can actually direct yourself and it's very, very shockingly easy. It's super easy to orient yourself, to shoot enemies, to grab objects by using your little gravity glove and shooting stuff at people. Like, the Zero-G stuff is so good and now they've actually changed certain puzzles and storyline elements to match that new ability. Like there was a time in the original game where you got on like a turret and shot some rocks. Now we get to float around in Zero-G space while hacking these anti-freaking asteroid defense turrets. This is just such a welcome improvement. Now, the other thing is these power grid puzzles. I mean, I guess puzzle isn't the correct term for it, but now sometimes there will be times where you have to select different parts of the low power areas. There will be like three options. It'll be like, do you want to have oxygen? Do you want to have lights? Or do you want to open up the next door? Which, of course, since you need the next door open, which means you'll have to choose between two of the separate options. Do I want to have 60 seconds worth of oxygen and have to rush through this segment? Or do I want to turn off the lights so I can take my time? But the spooky monsters are definitely going to grab me. This feels great. Honestly, this is also what leads to a lot of new side content. A lot of times you can rewire the puzzles and find different side paths, secret areas with extra additional lore bits. Top to bottom, from the glorious lighting system to the new combat, I love this game. I mean, seriously, even now, after having played so much of it, I am completely enthralled. Motive, the people who made this over Electronic Arts, I cannot commend you guys enough. This is a freaking perfect experience. But let's go over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving the Dead Space remake a 10 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching, gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big ol' thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, and please do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Man, sorry to be cheesy, but thank you so much for all the support on the channel. I love playing horror games, so getting a chance to sit down and play this game before it came out and really experience its glory... It means so much, and I could not have done this without all your likes and comments and support and subscriptions. So seriously, you guys, I love you. I love you. And I freaking love Dead Space. <laughs>